Hey everybody, welcome back to Calc 3 Online. Um, so the plan for today is just do actually two more Lagrange multiplier problems. Um, these ones are so important in like tons of areas of engineering and math and science that um, I really want to make sure you feel good with these. So um, this one, um, so it's actually um, going to be one that uses uh, four equations and four unknowns which we haven't done an example for yet, so I think it's good to see. But basically, this is the idea. So um, we're going to find the points on this sphere, all right, that are closest to and furthest from this point, all right? And the idea, right, is like, you know, if you draw it in a straight line there, there's some point, like, they're kind of labeling it P, um, or you can, like, shoot through the sphere, right? And, like, some point over here, I don't know, call it Q or something, um, and that's going to be furthest from that point. And so here, um, it, it seems like we almost don't have enough information at first, I think, because actually the constraint is the sphere, right? This is like the, the constraint that's put over the problem. Um, but the thing that you're actually maximizing and minimizing is a distance. And this is like a common trick in anything. And like, I, I remember doing this a lot in like physics problems. Um, so since distance is positive, um, it's actually easier to maximize, minimize um, the square of the distance rather than the distance. And that's okay to do because distance is positive. Um, and the reason it's nice is then we don't have to deal with like um, a square root, okay? Um, and square roots are just like annoying to deal with like derivatives of and things like that. So this is kind of a common um, trick. All right, so... The actual function that we're going to do is a distance function. And this is the distance function we'll have. And um, so if you just look at what that is, right, that's just the um, distance um, in three-dimensional space uh, from the point 3, 1, negative 1. And, you know, x, y, z is just going to be an arbitrary thing. And so, um, like an arbitrary point in 3D space. And so what we're really going to... Um, maximize, minimize is the square of that distance. And so we would be able to peel off that square root, which is really nice. And then um, that's where we'll kind of get going. So um, this is like my, um, you know, f of x, y, z uh, that I am going to optimize based on the sphere. All right. So um, let's do the gradient of f. All right. So the gradient of f is, um, you know, basically it's just going to be, um, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. Oh, I don't want that. I wanted this. Um, when we do the derivatives here, it's pretty nice. We just literally bring the powers down um, and then we'll copy uh, the parentheses. So um, the gradient is just 2 times x minus 3 and then 2 times y minus 1 and then 2 times z plus 1. That's my gradient of f. And my gradient of g um, is, so we're going to do the same kind of thing. We're thinking of, you know, really like moving this 4 over. Um, and so it's like f of x, y, z. So it's like a four-dimensional function, but we're, you know, spatially you're going to hurt yourself if you try to like think about what that really means here. Um, it's just how the algebra kind of pans out. We're just pulling it up in a dimension, really, so we can do the gradient of it. Um, and so the gradient of g is uh, just going to be 2x, uh, 2y, and 2z. All right? And then we're just going to do the common, or I don't know if it's a common thing, but just we're going to do the, you know, by definition of what Lagrange multipliers are, um, we, we know that we're going to have a maximum minimum when the gradient of the distance function is a scalar of the gradient of the um, um, constraint function. So basically the normal at this point is going to line up with the normal of the distance function. All right, and so if we do that, um, we would get, uh, so I think I'll do it in red down here. So we're going to get three equations, right? We're going to get 2 times x minus 3 equals 2x um, lambda. And then we get 2 times y minus 1 equals 2y lambda. 
And last two times z plus one equals two z lambda. And all of those, you could kill some twos. Um, actually, I'm gonna do the same kind of thing I did in the last video. So I'm gonna take out a two um, on both sides on all these. So that's just gonna make some of the algebra easier. Okay. Um, and so these three equations, these are like um, three of the four that I'll have. And the fourth one um, is right here, right? And so you have an x, y, and a z, and a lambda to deal with. Um, solving systems of equations is not always super easy, and sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, clever kind of work here. Um, the way that I personally think about this one is um, you can actually get x, y, and z all in terms of lambda. And that's just kind of a nice byproduct of having only z and a lambda, y and a lambda, x and a lambda. And then because of that, you could go back to this equation at the very end and plug in your x in terms of lambda, your y in terms of lambda, and your z in terms of lambda. Tongue twister. Um, and then you can solve for lambda, um, and then actually from there, you'll go back and you'll solve for X, Y, and Z. So that's kind of how I see to do it, but I'm sure there's other ways. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, so we've got, um, let's see, so we'll do, I'm going to move like for this one. So X, I'm going to move the uh, minus X lambda over, and then I'm going to move the three to the other side. And then I can factor an x out. I get 1 minus lambda equals 3. And that would mean that x equals 3 over 1 minus lambda. Right? And honestly, I, they're all kind of like that. And so I think I'm just going to write down what you'll get for the other one. So this is x. Um, y would end up being, um, if you use the same kind of like technique there, uh, 1 minus lambda. And then z would be negative 1 over 1 minus lambda. Okay. Um, now, um, we can go ahead and take these three, plug it in here, and um, basically solve for lambda. And that's what I'm going to do over here. Uh, okay. So, if I plug those in, I'll get this. Um, okay. So, that is my x, my y, and my z plugged in. And really at this point, it's just a lot of um, algebra. <laughs> um, I like the way I would do this. You have a common denominator. So um, you can square 9 and add 1. And this is 1 also, right, to it. And so you get 11 over 1 minus lambda squared equals 4. And so then um, 11 over 4 would equal 1 minus lambda. And then uh, plus and minus the square root of 11 over 2 would equal 1 minus lambda. And so if you move the lambda and the square root thing back and forth, um, you'll get lambda equals 1 plus and minus square root of 11 over 2. And um, now you have a value for lambda. So you can go back to things like your x, let's say. So x is 3 over 1 minus lambda, and you can pop that in. Um, and in this case, you're going to get two things, because the plus and minus. One of them is 6 over square root of 11, and the other is negative 6 over square root of 11. Um, and you do that for x, y, and z, okay? Um, y, you're going to get... 2 over square root of 11 and negative 2 over square root of 11. And z, you're going to get um, uh, actually the same thing. You're going to get 2 over square root of 11 and negative 2 over square root of 11. And, um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm sort of avoiding some of the annoying calculation here, but, you know, I would just personally just crank through this on a calculator or something just to, I wouldn't worry about trying to do that out on paper. I just plug it in and you'll get this stuff. <laughs> um, and then um, you can have your points. So, um, you know, one of the points is um, going to be 6 square root of 11, comma 2 square root of 11, 
I'm a negative 2 square root of 11. And then the other one uh, is negative 6 square root of 11, uh, negative 2 square root of 11, and 2 square root of 11. And so these two points are the ones that are closest and furthest away from this point, right? Um, so this one is, let's just kind of uh, color code this a little bit or something. So this, this one is right there. That's like the point P. And then, uh, oh, I don't know, we'll do orange. Uh, orange is like, you know, somewhere back there. It's one I kind of before I called like Q. Um, but that is it. Um, that is a situation where we've, we basically figured out the max and min distance from this point um, on this sphere using Lagrange multipliers. Whew. All right, uh, one more example, and it's not nearly that long. So um, this one, you could probably do it other ways too, but it's just kind of a cool example, I think, to show you how you can use Lagrange multipliers to... Um, answer this question. So um, we're going to prove that the rectangle with maximum area that has a given perimeter P is a square. Okay. And um, so the, the thing I'm maximizing is my area. So my, it's like a function of X and Y. And if you don't know the way you find the area is X times Y. Um, and then my constraint is this um, perimeter thing, right? And so this is my constraint function, right? And if I think about the constraint as a function of x and y, um, we get 2x plus 2y and then minus p, right? Because we know 2x plus 2y would equal p. So again, we're doing the thing where we like pull it up into a higher dimension. All right. Uh, gradients of f need to equal a scalar of the gradient of g. And so here we're going to have y comma x needs to equal lambda times uh, 2, 2. All right. So here y equals 2 lambda and x equals 2 lambda. Yes. Um, and so you can... Um, you know, you can solve basically for lambda in either one of these, and then um, that that's kind of how I would see to do it. So if I take uh, this one, let's say, uh, x over 2 is lambda, right? So if I plug that in here, and then I'll write that over here, um, y is going to equal 2 times x over 2, and those cancel, and it's saying y equals x. Um and that basically proves it, right? Because, um, you know, the only time when you're in a rectangle and the y is equal to the x is in the situation where that's uh, probably the worst square that's ever been drawn. <clears throat> but let's say that's a square, um, is where those two things are equal, right? Um, and... Yeah, and, and I mean, I guess technically there's a case, I was just thinking, where lambda could be zero, but it's really sort of trivial because if lambda is zero, then x is zero, and we're talking about area, and so that would be like the trivial area. Um, a lot of times you do Lagrange multiplier problems, lambda equals zero does something kind of weird in the problem. Um, not to say that it can't be considered. We did a problem where it, it actually was important. But um, but here, um, lambda equals zero is sort of trivial because although it would actually help solve the system, um, it is a trivial case. So, All right, that is it for Lagrange multipliers.